الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا الدين القويم وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي اجتباه وهدى ورحمة للعالمين أرسله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون ولو كره المشركون ولو كره من كره اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمي الحبيب وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي الخاطئة بتقوى الله عز وجل وأحثكم وإياي على طاعته وأستفتح بالذي هو خير يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز والسابحون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this ayah of Surah At-Tawbah وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ The early immigrants, the early pioneers of the muhajirin and the ansar The early pioneers of the immigrants and the supporters and those who follow, followed their footsteps until or who followed their footsteps in the right way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them gardens under which the rivers flow and they will be there forever and that is the great success who are al-muhajirin who are the migrants or the immigrants what did they do until they got this praise and this great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this great mention in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where did they migrate to and why did they migrate this will be a very short reminder about the hijrah of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his honorable sahaba radiallahu anhum we started a new Hijri year by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings and today is the second or the third of Muharram which is the, the first month of the Islamic lunar calendar and this is one of the sacred months as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu explained in his hadith and we are in the year 1437 after the Hijrah of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this should make us stop for a moment to reflect on the year that has passed and to think and to plan for the year that's coming or that has come. Our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam urged us in many of his ahadith to reflect on our actions and to bring ourselves to account as in the hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi radiallahu anhu. That the Prophet said, Al Kayisu Mandana Nafsahu wa Amila Rima Bad al Mawt. Wal Ajizu Man Atba Nafsahu Hawaha wa Tamanna ala Allah. Al Kayis, the wise person, the knowledgeable person, the, the mindful person, the Aqil, is the one who brings himself to account who brings himself to account every now and then he brings himself to account like just like the merchants or the traders at the end of the year they start making what we call jard or taqweem or evaluation and they reflect and think of the on the past year how much they earned what did they lose 
what were the good things they did, what are the, the, the places of improvements that they should work on, how much they have to pay for this person or that person or for taxes. So they make evaluation and they make calculations at the end of the year so that they know where they stand. So what about us? Shouldn't we make this type of calculations and self-account, self-accountability? Shouldn't we bring ourselves to account? Those are the mindful ones and the wise ones as narrated in the hadith. الْكَيِّسُ مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَهُ The aqil, the wise person, is the one who brings himself to account. What did I do in the, in the last year? Why was I uh, close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did I fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How was my relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with my parents, with my neighbors, with my co-workers, with this, with that? This is the mindful person. Our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reminding us that the mindful person is the one who brings himself to account and who works for what's after death. مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَهُ وَعَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ the one who is preparing for the eternal life. وَالْعَاجِزُ مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَاهَا وَتَمَنَّى عَلَى اللَّهِ And the disabled one, the one who will be among the losers, is the one who just follows his desires and ego. All of what he is concerned about, just feeding his ego, satisfying his desires. That's the ajiz. مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَاهَا He leaves, he lets his desires be fed in the right way or in the wrong way, he doesn't care. مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَاهَا وَتَمَنَّى عَلَى اللَّهِ And he just wishes. Allah is most merciful. Allah is most forgiving. Allah will admit us in paradise. No. That's not for everyone. That's not for free. No, there must be a price that you have to pay. It is not wishes, as Allah mentioned about the Jews and Christians in the in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ or وَقَالُوا لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارًا They said no one will enter paradise if, except if he is a Jew or a Christian. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to them saying, تِلْكَ أَمَانِيُّهُمْ those are, these are their wishes. These are, this is their wishfulness. بَلَا مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهُمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do the acts of worship and they show benevolent, benevolence and they are gracious and good to others, good with their, their relation, good in their relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the ones who will be rewarded with paradise. Those are the ones who will have no fear, nor will they grieve. So it's not about wishes. It's not only about wishes, and this will move us to the next reminder, inshaAllah, which is the hijrah. The hijrah means the migration. The migration of who? Why and who chose the migration to be the beginning of our Islamic history? To be the beginning of our calendar as Muslims? Is not this our calendar? Is not this how we, we write our date? Or at least how we're supposed to look at the history when we write the date? It's okay to work and to remember and to write the non-Muslim calendar or date, no problem. But it is really painful that you forget your own calendar and your own history. When you say or when you write, now we are in the year 1437 AH, what does that mean? That means 14... 37, 1437 years after the hijrah of who? Of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why he migrated? 
he migrated to establish the Islamic or the Muslim community which will be protected and which will have the freedom to practice its rituals and to spread the message of Islam to all the worlds. That was the reason for the Hijrah. And why did not he do it in his hometown, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because his people rejected his message. Only few people responded to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet, he did not migrate from his own mind, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did not migrate except after Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala permitted him to migrate. What did he do, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? 13 years in Mecca. The thing that he was doing along with his honorable Sahaba radiallahu anhum was jihad. But not jihad of fight. No, that's the easy jihad. Yes, that's the easy jihad. The major jihad, the true jihad is the jihad and the struggle against the desires, against your ego, against the things that you love to strive and to sacrifice the things that you love for the thing that Allah loves. That's the jihad. It's very, it's, it's incomparable to go to a battle and to die in one or two minutes or five minutes than striving and showing patience for 13 years despite all torture, despite all harm, despite all insults, from this person and that person, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were tortured with very severe types of torture, yet our beloved وسلم, would pass by them and say, Sabran ala yasir, fa inna mawa'idakum al jannah. He could do nothing for them وسلم, except his honorable dua, وسلم, telling them, O oh, people of Yasir, have patience. Inshallah, we will meet in paradise. So, that was the main jihad they did and that, this is the very first lesson dear brothers and sisters we need to take from the hijrah of our beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not run away because he his patience wa, was over no but he migrated because he wanted to establish and to find a land that will embrace this message and to reduce the torture and the harm from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And this is why he allowed them to migrate. But when did he allow them, sallallahu alayhi wa After 13 years of struggle and strife, they were under siege for years until they ate from the leaves of trees. That's the most loved creature to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What did we do? What did we do? What sacrifices have we done? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and this is the, the third lesson, so the, 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 the first lesson from this we need to take, inshallah, is to reflect on the past year and to plan for the next year and to hope to avoid the mistakes we did in the last year and to do better deeds, inshallah, in this year. The second lesson was that the Sahaba and the Prophet وسلم, did the best jihad, the major jihad, the most difficult jihad. As narrated in one of the hadith when the Prophet وسلم, came from one of the battles, he said, we have come back from the minor jihad to the major jihad. The minor jihad is the jihad of fight. The major jihad is the jihad against your own desires. Is jihad al-nafsi wal-hawa. As he told us وسلم, in the authentic hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad, المجاهد من جاهد نفسه في ذات الله. The true struggler, the main struggler is the one who struggles against his own desires for the sake of Allah. To make his soul submit, his ego, his desire submit and be in conformity with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and what his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa loves. The third lesson is sacrifice. How much they sacrificed, radiallahu anhu. When the Prophet وسلم, left Mecca and he turned back and he said, By Allah, you're the dearest and the most loved of towns to me. And if your people did not force me to leave, I would have not left. He was forced to leave because they did not 
respond. And this message should spread to all the worlds because he is mercy to all the worlds, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with all the, the torture, with all the harm, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, showed absolute mercy and love and pity for those who tortured him. In one of the incidents, they, the Sahaba told the Prophet Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, ud'u alayhim, pray against them. He said, I was not sent as a cursor, I was sent as mercy. Innama bu'ithu rahma, wa lam ub'at la'anan Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the gifted mercy. As he told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, innama ana rahmatun muhdat. I am not but a gifted mercy. Allah gifted him to us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he showed a lot of patience and perseverance Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum They all sacrificed for this religion What did they sacrifice? All of the Sahaba they migrated secretly Except for Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhum They migrated secretly This means they did not have time to sell their houses And to carry with them their belongings No they sacrificed everything for Islam, for their religion, to keep their aqidah, to, to keep their belief. What did we do again? What did I do for Islam? What did I sacrifice? Everyone should ask himself. Sayyidina Abu Salama radiallahu anhu, one of the air, very, very early migrants, he came with his wife, Um Salama, and their only child. And he was migrating and the people of Quraysh stopped him and they said, you cannot go. If you want to go, you cannot take your wife. Your wife belongs to our tribe. To Bani Makhzum will not let her go and will not let your child go. So they took her, his wife and his child, yet he migrated. And his people heard, his clan heard about the incident and they came and they said, well, the child is ours because his father is from our tribe. So the two tribes, the two groups, they started bullying the child from this side and this side. And the mother is crying and looking until the family or the clan of his father took him. And the Quraysh took his wife and he migrated. He did not say, well, let's forget about this issue and this religion, I'm going to stay with you. Because Hijra was an obligation on them. It became an obligation, they cannot stay in that place where they cannot practice their religion. They had to migrate. And they had to sacrifice. And Sayyidah Salama radiallahu anha, who, who became later on the wife of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa She became our mother. One of the mothers of believers, radiallahu anhun, and she would come and go to that place of the desert for more than one year, looking forward, so that maybe someone who has some mercy left in his heart will help her to follow her husband and to bring her her child back. And that's what happened after more than one year. One of the, the Arabs who had some mercy left in his heart he talked to the leaders and they felt some pity and they gave her her child and she followed her husband. Sayyidina Suhaib radiallahu anhu, he sacrificed all of his wealth. They stopped him, they told him, where are you going? You came and you were very poor and now you are wealthy, you cannot leave. He said, well, if I tell you where, where I hid my wealth, will you leave me? They said, we'll leave you. So he sacrificed all of his wealth that he saved for years. They sacrificed everything for their religion. Again, what did we sacrifice? Sacrifice, jihad, struggle, the major jihad, the great patience, perseverance. These were some of the lessons that we learned from the hijrah of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his honorable Sahaba. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala help us to follow their footsteps أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه يغفر لكم وادعوه يستجب لكم
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers and sisters The migration The hijra of our beloved Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his honorable Sahaba is an event that needs lectures and lectures an event that deserves weeks to be discussed and to be reminded of and to be explained especially in this country especially in these circumstances that we are facing as Muslims we need to learn from that major event in our history from that marking point in our history the last lesson inshallah we'll try to shed some light on in this in these few moments is trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite the fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he will be protected from people when he said wallahu ya'asimuka minan nas Allah will protect you from people yet when he migrated sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he wanted to teach us a great lesson that trust in Allah does not mean you sit without doing anything, without doing and taking any precautions and you trust in Allah. No. He taught us that trust in Allah is something in your heart. And you have to follow the reasons, to follow the laws, to take the precautions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in this life. The laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in this life. If you're traveling for a long place or far place, you have to check the oil of your car and check the brakes and not do as many Muslims do. Come on, Akhi, just trust in Allah, don't worry. Ittakil ala Allah, don't worry. Allah will protect us. No, that's not tawakkul, that's called tawakkul. If you have an exam, you have to study very well. Then you forget that you studied and you put your trust only in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in your memory, because your memory might let you down. When you have an interview for a job or anything you want to do, anything you want to do, you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the real doer, is the, re the only one who can make it happen. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, at the same time, you have to follow the laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in this earth. You have to take all precautions, and this is what our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. He put Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, the one who sacrificed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his own soul, he was ready to sleep on his bed. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the security and the guarantee that they will not reach him. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Sayyidina Ali for another important reason which is to give the people of Mecca their trusts back. Yes, despite the fact they were disbelieving in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they did not believe him. Excuse me, they also tortured him and his Sahaba yet if they have something precious, they will come to him, please keep this as a trust with you. They knew he is the Sadiq and the Ameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They knew he is the trustworthy one, the most truthful one. And this shows you that most of them, if not all of them, their disbelief was not that of conviction, but it was about the desires and the ego they had. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to make all people equal. There's no preference to a white over a black, or a black over a white, over, or an Arab over an un-Arab, no. But that something they did not like, because they were enslaving people, and trading with people. So they rejected his message, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, despite the fact they knew he was right. And they knew he was a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he kept Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu anhu, and he left, his house and he took some dust and put on their heads and was reading some ayat of Surah Yasin وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدَّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ سَدَّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them blind to see the Prophet وسلم, and they fell asleep and he left calmly and with full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and went to his beloved one Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu who knew that the Prophet وسلم, will migrate and he was expecting and hoping that he will be the friend of the Prophet وسلم, in the Hijrah and he prepared two camels and he fed them for weeks and he prepared all of his money as the scholars mentioned all of his wealth to serve the Prophet ﷺ in his hijrah and he left his daughters there and he traveled and he went into that honorable journey with his beloved ﷺ. our beloved ﷺ but one of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, Abdullah, son of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he appointed him to be like the intelligence guy. He would, he told him to stay among the, the Meccans and bring him the news at night to the cave that the Prophet sallallahu planned to stay in for a while. Because the Meccans, they appointed hundred camels for the one who will get the Prophet sallallahu dead or alive. So the Prophet وسلم, also took the help of someone who was, who was a non-Muslim to take him to al Medina from a different way that people usually go through. This is trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they took a different route to al Medina, And they took the help of this non-Muslim guy, Abdullah bin Urayqid. But the Prophet ﷺ trusted him, even though he was not a Muslim. But the Prophet ﷺ trusted him because he knew he is a truthful person. And he would have Sayyidina Asma, daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, to provide them with food to the cave every day. And he would he appointed Amir bin Fuhaira, the servant of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who was a shepherd to take his sheep so that his sheep will remove the traces and the footsteps of those two guys so that the people of Quraysh will not know the place of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is trust in Allah. Despite all this, despite all these precautions and all this, these plannings, the people of Quraysh, they were able to find the cave and they stood at the face of the cave to the extent Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, O oh Allah's Messenger, if they look at their foot or at their feet, they will see us. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, Ma vannuka bithnayn Allahu thalithuhuma. What do you think of two people who have Allah as their third? who has Allah as their supporter. لا تحزن إن الله معنا إذ يقول لصاحبه إذ هما في الغار إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, when he told his companion, don't grieve, don't fear, don't be afraid. Allah is with us. Allah will support us. This is the trust in Allah. So his trust is in Allah, not in anything he planned for. And this is a major lesson we need to take from the hijrah of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's inshallah to summarize and to conclude and to remind, plan and avoid the mistakes you made in the, in the past year and plan for a new year in which you aspire to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be a better Muslim and remember the sacrifices the Prophet ﷺ and his Sahaba made so that this message reaches us and remember that they struggled the great and the major jihad for 13 years and even after that for a long time and remember that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only by words it is actions and words and an act of the heart may Allah subhanahu Help us to follow the footsteps of those noble ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, forgive our parents, forgive our sheikhs, 
forgive those who taught us, forgive those who have rights upon us, forgive those who have done favors to us. Allahumma ghfir lil mu'minin wal mu'minat, al muslimin wal muslimat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat, innaka ya maulana sami'un qareebun mujibun lil da'awat. Allahumma farrij anna wa anil muslimin fi kulli makan, Allahumma farrij anil mazlumin fi kulli makan. اللهم ردنا والمسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم Oh Allah forgive all Muslims and believers men and women the dead and the living ones Oh Allah shower with your mercy all those who passed away all Muslims who passed away and give speedy recovery to those who are ill Oh Allah help us to be guides to others and to be guided O oh Allah, help us to give a beautiful picture about Islam to others. O oh Allah, forgive us our sins, overlook our shortcomings. Salli Allahumma wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. O oh Allah, give relief to all the brothers and sisters who are suffering everywhere. Wa qfir Allahumma lana wa li walidina wa li mashayikhina wa li ashabi al-hukuqi alayna. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimu s-salam.